Hello guys, welcome back to this hair modeling video series. Recently, I finished working on this character called Deborah Bruscretti from my favorite video game of all time, Dragon Quest V. And in this video, I would like to do a bit of breakdown of how I approached making this kind of curl up to hairstyle. Before we start, I just want to mention that I'm still learning and improving my hairstyling skill every day, so please know that my method is not like the best way, okay? But with that being mentioned, let's begin. As usual, I started off gathering up the reference images for this particular hairstyle. Deborah has this type of Japanese garret hairstyle, or hairstyle that is quite popular amongst lots of Japanese girls at the uh, important ceremony we have in Japan when they turn 20 years old, which we call Seijin Shiki. This hairstyle might look similar to the classic ponytail at first glance, but it turned out it is constructed in different ways, so I had to do a bit of research by asking questions to my friends and googling. During the research process, I found this awesome hairstylist YouTuber called Zen Hair Set Skill. He makes a lot of detailed and educational hairstyling videos for those who want to learn about hairstyling, and his teaching method is very easy to understand, so you might find his videos very useful. So I will highly recommend you checking them out. Once I have gathered up the reference images, I created a laugh blockout of the hair based on them. This blockout serves as a guide for the placement of actual haircuts later, and it doesn't need to be detailed at all. If you have been watching my videos, you might know that I keep blockout of the hair quite simple. This is because it just needs to represent the volume and design the hair, and it's not going to be in the final render, so there's no point in adding too much detail and making it look polished. For the hair texture creation process, I used a software called Fibershop. I created two different hair textures for the layer 0, 3 for layer 1, and 3 for layer 2. I used many types of hair texture for this project, but in this tutorial, I'm going to use only opacity map and depth map in the blender. Now we can start making the hair. As for the method, the entire workflow is pretty much the same as the one I showed you in my previous video, but with a slight modification. I'm going to be heavily relying on the manual approach, as opposed to more automated method because it allows me to have most amount of control and optimization. And moreover, I find that it is much easier and simpler to just place haircuts one by one to create a design of hair. So using the block app as a guide, I'm going to start placing haircuts from bottom level of head and working way up to the top. This helps me to create nice layering effect over the hair. And for the optimization purpose, remember to keep the curve resolution as low as possible and increase it only if it is necessary. I usually keep my total polygon count for the hair between 10k and 20k trees, but of course, depends on the complexity of the hairstyle and what you're making this hair for, this number can go lower or higher. The goal here is to create major form of the hair with as few haircuts as possible. For this layer, we don't really need to care about intersection of the haircuts too much, since this layer is going to be covered with more hair layers above it. If you are having problem with matching root of the hair to the sculpt of the head, we are going to fix that later to establish a cleaner hairline. Once you have finished establishing the overall shape of this layer, but hairlines are not looking good, then we can convert its curves to ribbons, and this allows you to tweak the shape much more precisely and easier. However, this method has a downside as well. For instance, you lose the ability to use many hair tool functionality like assigning random UVs. And moreover, when you do manual editing with ribbons, and if you convert them back into the curves, you will lose all the edit you did. So if you are using this method, you are going to need to make sure that your layer has pretty much already finished.
Here's how the layer looks in the end. Moving on to the hair layer 1, which is used to break up the texture from previous layer and create a design of the hair. So make the new material, assign the new UVs, and start placing the hair cards. For this layer, we need to create a variation of the hair strands, so instead of placing hair cards one by one, we are going to create groups of hair clumps and place them to make our life easier. Important thing to remember for this layer is that we don't want to make the repetitive pattern or make hair look flat. By flat, I mean placing hair cards all at the same level. Having the depth information will make the hair look more interesting, so always try your best to avoid making this mistake.
moving on to the hair layer 2 or flyaway layer. This is responsible for adding more flow and life to the hair and making the hair look more interesting. We don't need as many hair cuts for this layer, but we need more variation to the shape. Now once you have finished everything, your hair might look something like this. If you are planning to just render it out inside a blender, then your work is done. But if you are thinking of using this in a game engine or something like Marmoset like I have to do, there is optimization process you can do. Select all the hair cards, go to the curve setting tab on the right, reduce the curve resolution, right click, select copy to select it. This will reduce the polygon count of the hair cards all at once. Finally. Press Ctrl Shift H, finalize your hair, and your work is done. Now, treat yourself with a nice cup of tea because you definitely deserve it for your hard work. Congratulations my friends, you have successfully finished this hair modeling process. It was really fun trying to recreate one of my favorite characters from my favorite video games of all time. I would say there are many things I can improve and fix, but for now, I'm happy with what I have accomplished for this project and I would love to keep learning new things and improve my skills in the future. But anyways, that's all I have got for today. If you have any questions or tips you can share with the community, please share them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, see you later.